NASA set out on a new course to space in 2010 to establish a space transportation system using America's aerospace industrial expertise combined with NASA's extensive spaceflight flight history. The goal? Develop a new American spacecraft capable of safely and reliably sending NASA astronauts and others into low Earth orbit in a cost-effective manner. This one-of-a-kind effort by NASA's Commercial Crew Program will produce an American space transportation system at a fraction of the cost of previous spacecraft and with a greater reliability and safety factor than ever seen before. efforts by NASA and its partners, the agency is on the verge of taking the final steps to culminate in operational flights to the International Space Station. Good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Shearholtz from NASA's Office of Communications. We are here today at Kennedy Space Center to make an historic announcement about the future of human spaceflight. I'm joined by NASA Administrator Charles Bolden, Kennedy Space Center Director Robert Cabana, Commercial Crew Program Manager Kathy Leaders, and NASA astronaut Mike Fink. Each participant will be making some opening remarks and then we'll take a few questions. Mr. Mr. Cabana? Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. I'm really glad that you could all come out this afternoon and see the progress uh, that we are making as we uh, transform America's premier launch site into a spaceport like no other. Uh, we've made a lot of history traveling from here, and I think the announcement that we have this afternoon you're going to see that uh, we're ready to accomplish much, much more. Uh, as someone who's left the shores of uh, this planet from out here, I wish everyone had that view that uh, some of us here at this table have been able to have. And I think that the work that we have underway today, uh, it's making that possibility come a lot closer. Uh, the possibility for everyone to someday see our planet Earth from space. Now, don't get me wrong, we've got a lot more work to do uh, to get there, uh, but I know a lot of us are cheering on the success of our commercial crew program, and it's not because of what it means to NASA human spaceflight, but what it means to human spaceflight for everyone. Um, we also have a great advocate up in Washington, D.C., and uh, that's where Charlie Bolden has been working for years uh, to take what we are doing, how we are coming up with a new way to uh, perform spacecraft development at NASA. And he's been a tireless champion of the commercial crew program and the potential of this new partnership strategy uh, that we have. And I believe it represents the first steps uh, from uh, planet Earth and going on to, uh, to Mars one day into deep space. And I think when we look back on this, this trip from planet Earth to, to Mars, uh, we're going to see that it was uh, on a, a road that was paved by the team that Charlie's led. And so it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my friend and fellow traveler on this bold adventure, our administrator, Charlie Bolton. Thanks very much, Bob. And, and let me thank everybody who's, uh, who's here, both in the room and people who may be on the line. Uh, I know we're going to have a call in later for, for some people who were not able to get here. Today's announcement um, sets the stage for what promises to be the most ambitious and exciting chapter in the history of NASA and human spaceflight. Uh, from day one, the Obama administration has made it very clear that the greatest nation on Earth should not be dependent on any other nation to get into space. I want to thank uh, and say thanks to the leadership of President Obama, the hard work of our NASA and industry teams, and the support of Congress. Uh, today, we're one step closer 
to launching our astronauts from U.S. soil on American spacecraft and ending the nation's sole reliance on Russia by 2017. Turning over low Earth orbit transportation to private industry will also allow NASA to focus on an even more ambitious mission, that of sending humans to Mars. We've already fulfilled part of the President's vision. As you all know, for the past two years, two companies, SpaceX and Orbital Sciences, have been making regular cargo deliveries to the International Space Station. The contracts we're announcing today are designed to complete the NASA certification for human space transportation systems capable of carrying people into orbit. Once certification is complete, NASA plans to use these systems to ferry astronauts to the International Space Station and return them safely to Earth. Again, this is the fulfillment uh, of the commitment President Obama made to return human spaceflight launches to U.S. soil and end our reliance on the Russians. Like Bob, as a former Space Shuttle Commander, I know that the goal of every mission is to do something different from the flights that have gone before. Alan Shepard earned the title First American in Space, John Glenn, the first American to orbit Earth, and with all due respect to the late Michael Jackson, Neil and Buzz were actually the first moonwalkers. Today, we don't know who's going to get to command the first mission to carry humans into low Earth orbit on a spacecraft built by American private companies. Bob and I have been discussing <laughs> whether or not we should return to the astronaut office and, uh, and try to do that. But we don't know today who's going to be the first commander. But we know it will be a seminal moment in NASA history and a major achievement for our nation. We know now, however, who will build those spacecraft. The Boeing Corporation, or Boeing as I will refer to them, refer to them the rest of, of my talk, and Space Exploration Technologies, or SpaceX, have each presented to us designs that will allow us to fly crews to the International Space Station in just a few years. Respectively, the vehicles are Boeing CST-100 and, and SpaceX's Dragon. The total potential contract value is $6.8 billion over the initial contract period. The spacecraft will launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center Cape Canaveral Launch Complex. Our specialist teams have watched the development of these new spacecraft during earlier development phases and are confident they will meet the demands of these important missions. We are also confident they will be safe for NASA astronauts. To achieve NASA certification in 2017, they must meet the same rigorous safety standards we held for the Space Shuttle program. This wasn't an easy choice, but it's the best choice for NASA and the nation. We received numerous proposals from companies throughout the aerospace industry. Highly qualified American companies united in their desire to return human spaceflight launches to U.S. soil competed to serve this nation and end our reliance on Russia. I applaud them for all their innovation, their hard work, and most of all for their patriotism. The partnerships with Boeing and SpaceX promise to give more people in America and around the world the opportunity to experience the wonder and exhilaration of spaceflight, to realize the dream of leaving Earth for even a short time to float above our planet Earth in microgravity and to see the stars in, maj in majestic tapestry of the Milky Way unobstructed by the artificial lights and dust of our atmosphere. Space travelers will also be able to imagine and realize new benefits that can be brought back to Earth. While Boeing and SpaceX handled the tasks of taking our astronauts to the space station, the scientists on Earth and astronauts on the orbiting ISS National Laboratory will continue the groundbreaking research that has been taking place there for almost 14 years now without interruption. They will be able to add to that portfolio with an expanded crew made possible by the arrival of these new spacecraft. As research takes place in low Earth orbit and the companies refine their new space transportation systems, we at NASA will be working just as diligently readying our new heavy lift rocket, the Space Launch System, or SLS and our multi-purpose crew vehicle, Orion, for missions to the next decade that will carry people far from our local space community. Um, I want you to look behind me. And uh, I'm giddy today, I will admit. Um, I, I couldn't be happier. Um, just yesterday, um, off the coast of California, I witnessed the successful recovery test of the Orion engineering test article. The next generation spacecraft that's being readied for its December test flight 
and its eventual use for journeys to an asteroid and to Mars. With help from the U.S. Navy, Orion, the Orion mock-up was put through a full ocean recovery dress rehearsal. And, and I want to single out some people. I know this is kind of unusual, but, but, and I know this is a, a, a conference on commercial crew, but you need to take in the totality what NASA has been doing over the, just the last two weeks. Um, it has been incredible, but I want to salute our Navy, uh, the, the Navy Marine Corps team that supported us out in San Diego particularly Rear Admiral Frank Pons, who is the commander of Expedition Expeditionary Strike Group 3. Uh, you talk about patriotism and dedication. Rear Admiral Pons had, uh, had been sailing from the East Coast around through the Straits of Magellan and then up the West Coast of Mexico and the United States. He's been at sea for 12 weeks. And uh, he was heloed off the USS America yesterday morning uh, to come join us on the deck of the USS Anchorage and spent the entire day, I mean, 12 days at sea, uh, trying to get home, and, and Admiral Pons came and spent the day with the Navy NASA team watching us recover uh, the Orion mock-up. Commodore Clint P uh, Carroll, the, the amphibious squadron three commander who was also out there with us, and most importantly, Captain Mike McKenna and his command master chief, Pedro Santos, uh, leading the crew of the USS Anchorage, LHA-23. Following its first flight, Orion will splash down in the Pacific Ocean, and it's the USS Anchorage and her crew uh, that will duplicate what they did over the last few days and are practicing this week to recover Orion and get it back to us. This will be the first time in more than 40 years, and I cannot, I cannot overemphasize this. Um, you know, I, I think most of you sitting in here are Americans, or, or at least pretend to be. Um, you know, if you don't feel good over the coming weeks and months, uh, because for the first time in more than 40 years, this nation is going to launch a vehicle intended to carry humans beyond low Earth orbit, more than 40 years. So we're really excited about what's going to happen here in December. Last week again, right here at KSC, we rolled the Orion crew module for EFT-1 out of the Neil Armstrong ONC building to its hypergolic processing facility where it's being fueled right now in, preparations for it, in preparation for its maiden test flight in December. Just two days later at NASA's Michou Assembly Facility in New Orleans, we cut the ribbon on the new 170-foot high vertical assembly center the state-of-the-art tooling facility that will weld together the massive core stage of the SLS, the rocket that will launch Orion and our astronauts farther into space than any human has ever gone before. From Michu, I traveled to the Stennis Space Center to view progress on the historic B-2 test stand that is being prepared to test the core stage of SLS and its configuration of four RS-25, what used to be the shuttle main engines. We'll launch SLS and Orion about a mile from here, where we sit, over, the, over on Launch Complex 39B. It will test the systems needed to get to Mars with missions to an asteroid and areas beyond the moon, such as Lagrange points, where space observatories will be operating within our reach in the 2020s as we conduct the first deep space missions with astronauts since the Apollo moon landings. We'll conduct missions that will each set their own impressive roster of firsts. First crew to visit and take samples from an asteroid. First crew to fly beyond the orbit of the moon. Perhaps the first crew to grow its own food and eat it in space. All of which will set us up for humanity's next giant leap. The first crew to touch down on and take steps on the surface of Mars. The partnership, I said all that because I want you to take everything in totality because the partnerships that we're announcing today for development of our commercial crew vehicles would not be possible without the hard work of hundreds of individuals dedicated to America's spirit of exploration and innovation. I especially want to commend President Obama and the Congress provide for providing us support for this new way of doing business. And it is a new way of doing business, and Kathy's going to talk a little bit about that. By combining private sector ingenuity with bipartisan national commitment and the unmatched expertise of NASA, we're not only better able to stretch the boundaries of the possible, we're strengthening our economy and creating good jobs for our people. As President Obama has said himself, and I quote, we will not only extend humanity's reach into space, we will strengthen America's leadership here on Earth. Our destiny is set, and our course is laid out before us, and we're following it. 
We hope all of you will be inspired to join us on this next great ambitious leg of humanity's journey farther into the solar system than ever before. And for us, it starts right here in low Earth orbit, and it starts with what we're announcing today, and I could not be more proud. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Leaders, NASA's Commercial Crew Program Manager, will share some more details with us. In addition, she'll be sharing some details on a teleconference following this. In addition to her engineering prowess earned during the shuttle and space station programs, she has worked closely with aerospace companies. I'll turn it over to you, Kathy, for more details. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, sitting here today, it is humbling to recall how often NASA's Kennedy Space Center has been the stepping off point for Americans who left the boundaries of Earth to look forward toward the future. Once again, with these amazing structures as our backdrop, we are one step closer to that future. The nation is entrusting us with the opportunity to establish a U.S. commercial capability to share the job of flying NASA crew members to the International Space Station. And we know going to space is hard. NASA and the aerospace industry have accomplished hard things in the past. Collectively, we have a deep understanding of the momentous challenge that is laid before us and the relatively short time that we have to accomplish this difficult yet exciting task. Once NASA determines SpaceX and Boeing have met our requirements. The systems will be certified for NASA human spaceflight missions. They will then conduct at least two and up to six missions under these contracts to deliver a crew of four to the International Space Station. These missions will also carry powered cargo and vital science experiments to the station and safely return them to U.S. soil. These missions will enable NASA and our international partners to be perform more research on the orbiting laboratory, nearly doubling today's scientific research potential. They also offer the unique capability of serving as a space station lifeboat for up to 210 days, keeping our crew members safe in the event of an emergency. We'll get to that certification level through an incremental stepping stone approach. Boeing and SpaceX are responsible for completing the design, the development, the testing, the evaluation and certification of their system. Under these contracts, NASA will assess and evaluate how those systems meet NASA's safety and performance requirements. The two contracts give us the necessary mechanisms to ensure we're on the right track. Boeing and SpaceX are each required to conduct five certification milestones. The certification baseline review, the design certification review, the flight test readiness review, the operational readiness review, and the certification review, in addition to others they have proposed. Boeing and SpaceX will be paid based on the performance of these and other key milestones. Through approval of these reviews, and with regular NASA insight into their activities, NASA will be able to determine, or what we call certify, when Boeing and SpaceX's systems have met NASA's safety requirements for transporting NASA crews to the International Space Station. Before regular missions begin, Boeing and SpaceX will run their systems through rigorous ground tests. They also will perform at least one crewed flight test to the station with a NASA crew member on board. During that flight test, they will demonstrate the ability to safely deliver crew and cargo, dock to the station, and then return the crew safely home. NASA is committed to ensuring these systems are held to the same rigorous safety standards as previous government human spaceflight programs. We have worked carefully and diligently to assure our safety requirements span all mission phases and adequ adequately address hazards, including pad emergencies, in-flight aborts, and emergency landings. Boeing and SpaceX and the Commercial Crew Program recognize the extraordinary work we have ahead of us to reach our goal of certifying a crew transportation capability in 2017. We are grateful to have worked with eight industry partners throughout the past four and a half years and we know industry is up to the challenges ahead. 
these contracts highlight what commercial companies can accomplish and we are counting on them to deliver our most precious cargo, the crew who will perform vital science research on the International Space Station. And I think here's our example of some of that precious cargo, so I'm going to let Mike, Mike get started. All right, well, thank you, Kathy. Indeed, this is, uh, this is an exciting day, and I'm honored uh, today to be representing the American Astronaut Corps. And uh, it's a great chance to look into the future and think of what we can do with these new spacecraft. Um, I kind of look at keys when I look at these spacecraft, uh, keys to the uh, doorway of uh, these, uh, to space, right, where we can, uh, where the, we really are trying to open up uh, uh, the door to more and more people getting to see what, what we've seen from space, beautiful planet Earth, and, 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 and then, like Charlie was saying, and beyond. Uh, think about it for a minute. Uh, you know, NASA has, availed, has unveiled five spacecraft built for humans to take us to space and safely return during the 50 years, you know, as long as we've been around at NASA. We have Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Space Shuttle, and Orion. And, of course, we built our, uh, our amazing orbiting laboratory, the beautiful International Space Station. And each of these programs you know, leave impressive marks on American history and show how far we can reach uh, w as humans when we try. And the debut of each one of those, uh, uh, those programs uh, left that indelible mark in history. Imagine, today we're unveiling two new spacecraft. And, uh, and it's, it imagines, uh, boggles the mind to think of the possibilities of what we're going to accomplish. So uh, when I see you know, the CST-100 and the, and the Crew Dragon, I can't help but think of how it might affect all of us, not just astronauts and engineers but, and space workers, but, but all Americans. And these transportation systems will carry all the hallmarks of NASA's legendary spacecraft that I mentioned. They will be carefully designed with safety in the forefront of, in the forefront of requirements and a feature which you know, we astronauts uh, truly value, uh, safety first. And it'll carry the most uh, technolo technologically advanced uh, systems and operate uh, at the hands of the most skilled professionals that the world has to offer. So I'd like to compliment Kathy Leaders and her commercial crew program team. They've included us astronauts uh, since the beginning of this innovative program and have brought out the best of our unique skills and experience to the entire team. And we look forward to this next phase of development, flight testing, and, and being part of this industry and government team. And for us astronauts, the CST-100 and Crew Dragon are going to be terrific machines, outstanding, to get into orbit. When you think about all the things that go into a successful mission aboard our beautiful International Space Station, it's always the first 250 miles uh, getting into orbit that can be the most stressful. And these, these spacecraft are going to make the trip a bit easier. And we all know that it will never be easy. And uh, once arriving at the station, uh, like Kathy said, they'll stay docked in case we uh, have to call on them to get us home, uh, to, like a, a lifeboat, and then they'll get us home uh, when we do need to go home safely and quickly. And uh, the biggest thing I think is gonna that's going to really help us with the commercial program crew program is that uh, it's, we have more people working aboard the International Space Station, conducting even more scientific research than we've been able to do so far. And think about that, and it gives us a, a capability of uh, seven people uh, on an ISS mission instead of uh, just six. And we're talking about the ability to conduct a full-on studies that we're counting on that's going to help fill in the gaps about long-duration spaceflight so we can survive the years-long trip to Mars and back. And we have to get, when we're up there aboard the space station, believe me, I, I know cause sometimes I didn't do it, but we got to get it, uh, we got to do things right. And uh, these new spacecraft are going to help us get it right by giving us more time in orbit, more people to perform the work, and offering a way to get the experiment results, which include us, astronauts too, and hardware used up there and back uh, down here on Earth so that uh, we can be studied up close. Uh, later on, these two spacecraft, the CST-100 and, and Crew Dragon, could provide a comfortable lift into orbit for those who are not astronauts, but who are, like all of us, intrigued by spaceflight and expanding American industry, much like our successful history with the airplane. So I've watched from the windows of our beautiful International Space Station and, and during wonderful spacewalks as the Earth moved below, and uh, from 250 miles up, a glance can reveal one way you can see Paris, Look over there, and there's California or Brazil. And, uh, 
And looking up, you can see the entire universe before us. And, and with the addition of these new systems, the International Space Station, Orion, and the Space Launch System, NASA, like Charlie said, is poised to explore this beckoning universe. And the view from orbit around beautiful planet Earth affects everyone differently. I know it affected me quite uh, profoundly. It changes how we think of our planet, how we think of our neighbors, and perhaps more profoundly, there's that word again, but it is, how we think of ourselves. Uh, these new ships give us the hope that more and more people will get to see that view and take, that in, take the in that inspiration. Uh, these two spacecraft might be pretty small to carry so many big dreams and expectations, but I think and I know they will do extremely well. We astronauts look forward to the next several years as we develop, build, and test and fly these new ships. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, we will take some questions. We do have a li limited n amount of time as the administrator has a plane to catch here pretty quickly. And I'll let Mr. Weaver uh, let us know when, when that needs to be. Um, please keep in mind that as with any procurement, NASA's selection rationale and additional details will be provided at the appropriate time, but that is not today. I encourage you to ask questions our experts will be able to answer today. Please raise your hand, identify yourself by name and affiliation. One question each, please. Um, James Dean. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, General Bolden, could, what's the breakdown of the, the contract amounts between the two companies? And uh, do you feel like these um, give you kind of the best of both worlds with the uh, old space, new space uh, kind of mix that you might be looking for? Uh, I'm going to let Kathy answer the question about the exact amount in the contracts. Um, the old space, new space. Uh, we're learning a lot. We started learning with the commercial cargo program. Um, one of the things that's really encouraged me is to watch Kathy Leaders and, uh, and, and um, Mark Geyer as they have become partners in the, in the development of their respective spacecraft. And when I, I listen to them talk, how they're playing off each other, she's learning uh, from the development of Orion, and Mark is learning quite a bit about uh, what she's going through with the development of commercial crew. So, uh, that's what I call old space, new space, uh, and, and it's working very well from, uh, for us as demonstrated by commercial cargo. So I'm going to let Kathy answer the question about specific amounts in the cargo, in the uh, contracts. So the, uh, the Boeing contract award was uh, $4.2 billion, and the SpaceX award was $2.6 billion. Now I want to make sure people understand that that contract value is for uh, certification, so full up certification, development and certification efforts, including the within the RFP we had a requirement for at least one uh, crew demo, like a demonstration flight to the ISS with NASA crew members on it. Um, the, there's a maximum of six missions under that contract value and uh, a certain contract value amount for special studies. So it's those three components are all in those um, totals that I gave you for Boeing and SpaceX. Uh, Marcia Dunn. Marcia Dunn, Associated Press with, for General Bolden. Um, just how hard was it narrowing it down to these two companies and what put them over the top, if you could just speak in broad terms? Uh, I was not a part of the selection process, I am proud to say it. It was really hard. I know that, but again, I guess I defer to, to Kathy to let, let her tell you what, what she went through. Well, I wasn't part of the selection process either. either. What I can say is that the, uh, the selection official and the evaluation board um, that supported him was made up of a team of experienced and very seasoned NASA career civil servants. Um, and, you know, they conducted a very rigorous process and um, have the utmost and integrity, and we are very confident in their, these awards. Irene Klotz. Hi, thanks very much. Um, Irene Klotz with Reuters. Um, Kathy, on the uh, award, the discrepancy between the two amounts, is that what the companies had asked for? In other words, is SpaceX going to be able to get to the same endpoint as Boeing with that uh, less amount of money? And for Charlie, is, are these awards at all dependent on NASA um, having more than a continuing resolution for, uh, the, um, for this year's budget? Thanks. So for my part of it, <laughs> um, both, of the, both, both, of, both Boeing and SpaceX um, proposed to the same set of requirements. 
And so NASA awarded the contracts based on their proposals. Um, so it's two contracts to the same requirements. And to come on the second part, uh, Irene, you know, as we have said, in order for us to get to 2017, what we really need is for the Congress to support the President's request. Uh, we are confident that given where we are right now with the 2014 budget that, you know, and, and it's outrun, um, we can meet the 2014, uh, the 2017 launch date. But that, again, depends on Congress fully funding the, the budget as requested by the President. Bill Harwood. Uh, Bill Harwood, uh, CBS News for, for anyone, really. Um, is, is the long-range goal here is to have two operational crewed vehicles that will be routinely servicing the space station, either alternating or whatever, or is the expectation that one of these companies will emerge at the end of this road and be the one you use? Now, I'm trying to understand how this plays out long term. Ask, I'm going to answer that, Bill, because I'm going to tell you about the vision. Um, and I, the reason I went out to Mars uh, and started there is because that, that is where we're going. The, the nation is going to Mars, and we're leading other nations in, in, of the world who really want to explore. Uh, but everybody realizes you can't get there if you don't have a robust, viable, low-Earth orbit infrastructure. And in order to put that infrastructure in place, as we have said at least for the last five years, we've got to have um, sustainable commercial capability to service that low Earth orbit in infrastructure. We need more destinations than the International Space Station, to be quite honest. Uh, and in order to service those additional destinations, we're going to need as many providers as we can. So our intent uh, is as long as the providers uh, meet our requirements, uh, we want to use them. Uh, you know, ideally, several years from now, uh, there will not just be the International Space Station, but there will be other laboratories, uh, single modules and the like, where people can be going. And some of them won't have anything to do with the government at all. That's, that's the vision of a commercial space industry. And, and, you know, when you talk to Boeing and SpaceX over the next few days, um, I'd invite you all to ask them what, you know, what do, they, what do they envision as the market since they stayed in this thing? Uh, th I, we, I think we have time for two more questions. I know Scott Powers had his hand up. Scott Powers from the Orlando Sentinel. Um, based on uh, the progress they've made so far on the timetables that they project out, do you expect that one company or the other will be finished f and ready to be certified first and, and in action first? And which one? So I would say um, right now we're not going to comment on a particular proposal. I think, you know, you've got a couple of companies out there that are willing to talk about their plans. I will tell you that the goal on, under the RFP was for us to have certification by 2017, and we have credible plans for both companies to get there by that period of time. Certification includes, like I talked about before, at least one crewed demonstration flight. Um, and so we're very committed to that goal. Our providers are committed to that goal, but we will not sacrifice crew safety for that goal. Eric, I think it is. Yes. Uh, yeah, Eric Von Anka, WKMG Local 6, uh, CBS here in Orlando. Of course, we're concerned about and very interested in the local impact. I hope this is a question you can answer. And if not, maybe you can get close here. We've heard from Boeing that if they were awarded the contract, we'd see up to 550 local jobs here. Is that number correct? And how many of those jobs will be from workers here on the Space Coast? And same question for SpaceX. Do we have a number? Yeah, I don't, um, you know, we, we are really not going to comment on the particular provider's capability. I suggest now that you know who the offers are, or who the awardees are, that, you know, you're going to have a couple of folks out there that are going to be chomping at the bit to be able to share their strategy and their impact on the local economy. Um, really today, we're celebrating the awards and, um, and making sure that you understand what the requirements were in, in within the RFP and making sure you understand what NASA's role is going to be here. Industry's out there, and I'm sure they're ready to share with you their impact. And 
Thank Eric, you. I'd add that you know this really validates our plans at KSC of having a, a true commercial spaceport. We're moving ahead. The, what we laid in place years back and the vision that we had is coming to fruition now, uh, having this happen. So I think we've made tremendous progress, and I, I think we're going to continue down that path. So it, yeah, this validates everything that we've been doing. Thank you all for your time today. It's an exciting day at NASA for human spaceflight. We will have a follow-on teleconference with Kathy Leaders. You are welcome to call in or to listen to that on www.nasa.gov slash news audio. And of course, you can find all the NASA news at www.nasa.gov. Thank you.